What are the noticeable differences between East Coast Asian enclaves and West Coast Asian enclaves? A lot of people are wondering this right now, so hopefully we have an answer. Yeah, this is a hot topic in 2023. I think there's more Asians moving from the East Coast to the West Coast, West Coast to the East Coast than ever before in human recorded history, just due to you know work from home and technology. So uh, we made a viral video that got millions of views called West Coast Asians versus East Coast Asians a few years ago, but a lot of people are wondering, Andrew, is it still true to this day or have things changed? Ooh, let's talk about our observations. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. But real quick, Andrew, you know what else is east to west? We're talking about Smala. Today's sponsor, SmalaSauce.com from Sichuan to Sicily. You can use this as an olive oil, essentially a Chinese olive oil on anything. It is a perfect blend of east and west. It's delicious. Make Get sure it. you guys uh, like this video again, guys. I would say this, man. LA might have more ABGs than NYC due to the population of VIETs, but the East Coast has more PhDs from MIT, even though they might settle in the BAY and work in TECH. Okay, but if you want an ABG who listens to EDM, who sits at VIP, puffing up VAAPE, then which coast are you more likely to find one? But is she dating a guy with TATTs wearing a t shirt that has a BAPE? head on the front anyways guys uh that's just funny but i i i really want to david we got to cut to the core of why so many particularly males pose this question i'm not <laughs> saying females asian women don't ask this question but i think guys are particularly interested in the quality of life for a per asian guy yeah okay? I, I think that guys lives i don't want to say for sure guys i don't know for sure but it seems like it's really variable on the fishbowl like a guy's like life experience can vary a lot. Yeah. So I think a lot of guys are just wondering like, which coast would I vibe in and which enclave should I, you know, move to? Yeah, literally this post pops up on Reddit and like Twitter and TikTok like maybe once a yeah. month, you know, well, and it goes uh, viral every hopefully time. Hopefully this video helps people and, you know, let us know if you disagree or agree with our observations, right? Feel free to disagree and let us know what, you're, uh, what you've noticed. Yeah, this is based off a Reddit post that said, hey guys, are there any noticeable cultural differences between East Coast enclaves and West Coast enclaves? I heard that the East Coast is a lot more formal and hierarchical, while the West Coast is more casual and laid back. But I'm starting to think that the differences are really in the suburbs and the outlying neighborhoods of the same city because the main downtown areas, they're all starting to feel the same these days. Yeah, I mean, if I had to compare the Asian enclaves, now just Asian enclaves and this can be in any state because a lot of states have some version of an enclave i'm not just talking about flushing queens okay right. i'm and, also and you're not just about, talking about the 626 sgv yeah, i'm talking about you know south of boston alston i think or and then there's also uh you know around philly and all these other places virginia atlanta northern virginia or Tempe, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's on the east, West Coast, and then you have Texas, obviously. So I think this, to put it in short, when you talk about the Asian enclaves that I've seen, I think Texas and California Asian enclaves tend to look more like each other because they have more space and the weather is a little bit more similar. Right, you're seeing so, spacing in the geography spacing, and the Spacing, geography, you're driving big cars, you have space, it's hotter weather, blah, 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 you know. But, but it is true, typically around the cities on the East Coast, the cities are older, the Asian enclaves, maybe they move out to the suburbs or they're inside the city. They're a little bit more packed and the weather is also just more colder. There's a lot more rain, more snow to deal with. So obviously, guys, in general, the general East Coast, West Coast stereotypes do apply to all populations and you know, Asians are no different. I think the typical stereotypes still apply to Asians. Right, you're saying a West Coast person, specifically a California person, eats more tacos than somebody on the East Coast. That's going to apply to the Asians. Yeah. The people on the East Coast follow more high-end fashion, particularly Soho-y, all blacked out, you know, designer yes, that trends. applies to everybody. People, and Asians in Texas might have a higher rate of gun ownership. Yes, to no surprise. Um, yeah, I would say this. You know what's really interesting, Andrew? I think the only groups that exist in very, very, very large numbers on both in every city on the East and West Coast are Chinese, Filipino, and Korean. Mm. I believe, uh, I, I'm not saying there's not Vietnamese on the East Coast, but it's not like necessarily uh, every single city, right? Right, right, right. Um, I think that where we grew up, Seattle was a hybrid of East and West Coast. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the Pacific true. Northwest, Mid-Atlantic, these sort of like non-stereotypical. You know how like you have a city that's technically on the West Coast, but it's not the West Coast you're thinking of no no i would say seattle's interesting because it kind of has like the weather and climate of boston but it's kind of by the water like new york but then it's on the west coast of america so you kind of like you're kind of like 
am I, do I relate to California people or am right. I more like East Coast because Seattle's a little bit more like that or like I'm just weird. Is, it, is this sort of like how Florida is like very Spanish speaking like California, but then it's like Republican and it's like part of the South? Yeah. Florida, and they Florida, kind of talk, they kind of got that, well, I, Florida still counts as part of the South. And you're like, wait, where am I at? Am I in the Cali of the East Coast right now? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting. The, the main points that I think we didn't say in our first video that went viral, you know, a few years ago, is like, like Southern California in particular is very different because this is the only, the Southern California is the only place where you get a collection of like 12 or 15 cities in a row where the largest single ethnic group is Asian. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about like an entire district. Like what? Like, like a lot say. of cities I'm saying around America nowadays or a lot of states have one city that is very Asian. But in Southern California, you might have like 15 cities in a row that are very well, like Asian. Like the what? 49th Assembly District from Judy Chu. That, that's like, like we're talking about the San Gabriel Valley is a huge area. It's not a county, but it's just a whole area region where there's multiple, maybe 10 cities that are like, 50% Chinese. Right. The state congressperson will always be Asian, probably. Right. right. Um, I do think that uh, there are, like, different types of personalities that occur from different types of enclaves, though. For example, Andrew, I do think NorCal produces a very particular type of person. SoCal, New York, for example. However, it doesn't mean they all can't get along. But maybe, I, I got this theory, Andrew, the most extreme versions of people from each area might only thrive in that zone. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, are you saying like kind of the New York talker, like the kind of, uh, I guess, urban like uh, dude with the gift of gab, like that would be more coming from New York because that's the culture in New York. Right, right, right. I'm saying that that would be like only you to be able to be maximized or optimized to its maximum capacity, that skill set in certain places. Right, or, or I guess on the West Coast, what would be an extreme archetype on the west coast like skater maybe being a really bro. chill surfer like that's gonna asian, be good in asian. that's gonna be good in hawaii and good in limited right. parts of socal but where else are you gonna apply it like it's not gonna be a good yeah. identity to have that's on the true. east coast that's you know you go to toronto with that identity it's not gonna thrive yeah, i would imagine there's more like asian skate influence rappers on the west coast right than there are on the East Coast. But bring it back to your original point, Andrew. I think the reason guys ask this question so much is because the life of a guy can be so variable. And I think the most important thing that you can do is like pick an environment or a fishbowl that's right for you that you can not only survive in, but begin to thrive in. Yeah, and that doesn't mean that everywhere you go, instantly you're gonna click there. It sometimes takes some time, but you're gonna have to like just understand the general differences, test the market out, maybe stay there a week or two, and then kind of decide like, oh, is this a place I see myself kind of growing into? Because right. listen, you're not bigger than the city. You're not gonna change the narrative of that town, of that region, you're just one person. You're more or less gonna have to fit into some culture, subculture, or group, or niche there. Right, that's true. Um, Andrew, let's get into the comments section. There was a few comments saying, you know, listen, I think the long answer is it depends on who you are as a person, but the short answer is just pick the West Coast. <laughs> you uh, what, mean what if you're you Asian? Yeah, yeah, so, if you're Asian. So that you're saying the easy answer is, well, if I'm like an Asian guy and I'm just wondering, I want to be around other Asians and I want yeah. like a chill life. Like if you randomly had to throw some dice, right? And you're going to end up in a random West Coast city versus a random East Coast city as an Asian guy, which coast should you roll the dice on? Yeah, I would say just pick West Coast. As the easy answer. Right, right. But obviously, it just depends on who you are, where your family is at, all this other stuff. Somebody said, uh, but you guys forgot to mention how much thicker East Asian girls are on the East Coast. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, how much thicker Asian girls are on the East Coast compared to West Coast. Mm, interesting. Thicker East Asian girls are compared to the East Asian girls of the West Coast. I guess they're assumed, I, is this referring to kind of like the whole beach body culture where obviously on the West yeah. Coast, you're you're in a swimsuit more, it's warmer weather, it's more focused on avocados, salads, this kind of uh, being healthy model like lifestyle versus on the East Coast, it's not as much that. I think girls do generally want to look good, but they might try to compensate more with fashion and style and personality versus just their pure looks. Oh, but here's the crazy caveat, Andrew. Southeast Asian girls probably thick on both coasts. 
Probably. It doesn't matter. Thicker. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah, see yeah. more variance true, amongst the East Asian true, girls. True. Um, somebody said density matters and the generation of the enclave matters a lot too. Like a lot of people, he was saying, oh man, everybody looks at the coast, but I just look at the percentages of like how Asian a district is and how many generations has it been yeah. Asian. Do, do you feel like that the newer Asian enclaves, the ones that just formed in like the past 10 years on Tempe, the Tempe, Arizona, coast? for example. Yeah, on the East Coast though, I'm saying- like uh, like Northern Virginia, like I meet more and more Asians in New York that move from Virginia. And I instantly think that Virginia doesn't have a lot of Asians, but actually their particular city that they grew up in, they went to a high school that was like 30, 40, 50% Asian. Right. And I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that. So I guess I feel like the new enclaves in those type of cities are generally led by like, they like are newer. So they focus more like, education maybe i think older enclaves mm. they've had time and there's like and there's more like old world things going yeah, on yeah i, I can totally see that that makes sense i mean like you said if you are going to an all asian high school in like cerritos california or northern virginia or like one of these more like irvine style enclaves that's completely different than growing up in an enclave that's been there for like a hundred years in a right, city right, right, right. yeah i mean it is very different like from a ritual perspective like you said like what is the i guess like what is the enclave trying to achieve? Is it just trying to maintain its culture in like its Eastern culture in the West? Or is it just trying to develop, give a, a comfortable place where people can yeah. assimilate slowly? I mean, to start an enclave for Asians, oftentimes, you know, especially East Asians, they're gonna, they want like the supermarket. They want a bunch of after school Kumon type spots. They want all these things where they feel like they can move their entire family there mm. from a less Asian area to a more Asian area. Um, somebody said uh, it's good and bad, but I noticed in California, it is so Asian populated, they never really had to assimilate or mix with others. Mm. And this guy said, moving from Europe to America, I found that I had better connections with East Coast people because they took racial issues a lot more seriously and racism against Asians a lot more seriously. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it is more politicized on the East Coast. I think people are more culturally conscious, especially in New York. People are aware of more different types of cultures. Right, yeah, and, I mean, you gotta share the train with them every yeah, day, right? And, and you're more aware of it. You'll talk about it outright. Um, um, uh, blatantly, and I think that is, uh, yeah, you just have to deal with that, I guess. Yeah, somebody said that I feel like East Coast Asians know everything about basketball, whereas West Coast Asians spend all their time playing basketball, so it's different. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that, I do think more of the sports caster kind of culture is out in New York. I know a lot of Asian dudes who love, like, can break down basketball. They know everything about it, but yeah, they're not that good. Also, you have to understand finding gyms and courts in. Uh, that are indoor in New York is very hard. So it's hard to get a lot of runs in. Um, of course, the Reddit thread, Andrew, it turned into a bunch of arguing about is the food better on the left side or the food better on the right side? Obviously, what? Conventional wisdom would say that the West Coast is closer to Asia, right? Right across the Pacific versus being on the Atlantic. But a lot of people were saying it depends on the cuisine. Because as we know, Andrew, Philadelphia has incredible Vietnamese food. And then New York's probably got some of the highest end Asian fusion restaurants in all of North America. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think ah, that one's tough, man. To say whether the food is better on which coast. I mean, it really well, the cheap the food city. is probably the cheap Asian food might be better on the West Coast, though, at that level. Like the dollar, but then we have dollar dumplings in Chinatown here. You can't get dollar dumplings anywhere else in America. Yeah, I would say that's a good point, man. Somebody said, uh, I think that East Coast Asians look up to the West Coast because we still got Hollywood tech, um, a little bit of the less old world industries, right? Mm -hmm. You know, on the East Coast, it's still like finance and private equity and stuff I, like that. I, you know what? I'll say this about a lot of the Asians that I know that moved here from California, particularly SoCal. I think that a lot of them move here because they know it's interesting and they wanna be in New York at some point in their life. So they'll spend like three to five years here, but maybe move back to spend the rest of their life. Raise because, the family, have the kids, because right? Because they're home back in Irvine. I mean, that's appealing guys, so I understand that. But I think a lot of the Asians that end up moving to New York and staying there are from other East Coast cities because that means their family is only a few hours away. But because New York is by far the best city on the East Coast, that's why they move there to be competitive. But a lot of the LA ones, if you have a good life in Irvine, for example, or San Diego, what is it going to take for you to give that up to live in New York City? Yeah. Well, they're not moving to Philly from Irvine. Hey, Philly, Philly's got some cool stuff. But yeah, I mean, you would move to more New York. It's more worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said that uh, I feel like 
at, at one point that New York City uh, like partying and just partying in general in the Northeast for Asians was really club centric. People would club hop from Asian club to Asian club, but that the West Coast big rave EDC style has almost taken over everything. Yeah. that That's a change. That yeah. happened in the past like five, six years. I mean, dude, life is way more dynamic in New York City because you can hop from spot to spot. Um, but LA is you kind of pick your main big club that you go to. For, but but for is Asians. it true? Do you think that Vegas style has taken over everything in every city? Yes, yes. I think Vegas style partying is affecting and influencing every big city's nightlife part. Yeah, somebody said that being Americanized is very different from having an Asian American identity. They said if we were going to go by the Americanized game, Midwest Asians would be by far the most Americanized out of all the Asians because there is no Asians in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. But they said that people uh, that are Asian American... I mean, Asians in the Midwest might lack any AZN culture. Word. I think, like, I think New York is great if you also, if you're an Asian guy and you also want to meet and easily be around other types of Asi Asians and different types of people, period. You know, I, I think that's great. I think New York is great. It's a very diverse city. Yeah, for sure. Um, people were just talking about how unique the West Coast Asian is, you know, the clothing style from everything to uh, everything. I, I want to give a shout out to specifically SoCal and NorCal though, Andrew. Ultimately, I really do think that those places are just like super unique. You know what yeah. I mean? In terms of the suburban lifestyle and it feeling like, uh, it's hard to describe. It's almost like there's more Asian American culture there than there is even Asian Asian culture. Mm. Almost like, you know how Hawaii, there is Asian Asian culture, but it's more Hawaii Asian culture over Asian Asian culture. I feel mm. like when you're in the East Coast, it is more Asian Asian culture. You know I mean, the Asian-ness is more Asian. Yes. Okay. It's not Asian-American as it is Asian-Asian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I mean, those are my general takeaways. I think that it is true that, you know, ultimately, you got to really take a look at your own skill set. You know, where are your connections? Who do you really ultimately get along with? Because I do agree with one thing. Finding the right fishbowl for yourself is probably one of the most important things in life that people do not think enough about. Yeah, and this is America, you know, especially if you're somebody with a decent paying job, like, and you can move from place to place, man, definitely give it a shot. Hit up a friend that lives in New York or is staying in New York. Hit up a friend who lives in LA or OC and just go there for like a week. Yo, what about one month furnished rentals? That's like a new thing that's really oh, trendy man, nowadays. No, that's pricey. But yeah, I mean, whatever, Airbnb, you can like if, if you can do it. But I guess what I'm saying is that the, the general rules still apply. Although I think that there are slight differences that I've noticed over the past five, six years. I would generally say like, East Coast, more straight up, a little bit more gritty. Um, you know, things are a little bit more dirty and wet out here. It is in the more dense. Well, that's how America developed was on the East Coast first. Right, right, right. But the West Coast, of course, honestly, if you made me say nicer life, I, w I guess I could see why people would just say the West Coast. Yeah. Right? But it also depends on what type of life you want. Hey, guys, let us know what you guys think are the pros and the cons or what type of people would thrive on the East Coast, what type of people would thrive on the West Coast. Is the Midwest or the Gulf Coast in Texas even an option? Maybe. I mean, for sure, for some people. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. It's a very interesting discussion. Like we said, this pops up once oh. every few weeks on the internet. It goes viral every time with a different crowd. Let me add one last thing before we go. I feel like for New York and L.A., comparing these two, it's like New York is not a maybe the best city to be unmotivated in mm. i feel like you come here everybody comes here motivated to do something and that's why i think it's cool because you meet a lot of people who are motivated about something but if you just wanted to chill and not be ambitious and not be motivated the life the baseline life in la is is easier it's better yeah. yeah. Hey, guys, pros and cons, man. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. Keep it civil. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace.